All right, everybody, welcome to this talk about platform availability. Uh, schedule says Cloud Foundry availability. Um, the ideas presented in this talk can be basically applied to any uh, distributed system, so platform availability is as good as a title. So in this talk, um, what you're going to see is uh, the idea of a continuous uptime improvement and in order to be able to continuously upgrade the availability of any system you need to somehow measure its availability and in order to measure it you have to define what availability means and how you'd like to calculate your metric. You don't see any slides, do you? Well, that's kind of strange. All right. You would have said anything, right? <laughs> well, let me check the monitor settings. All right. Yeah, try to relaunch it again. Oh, you got to set the mirror if you want. You could do mirror. No, I don't want it to okay. that. Yeah, I think because it's a, you may have to. I'll just restart it. I think it's a I think what it does is because there was a, a recorded um, session, uh, so you can export it into a QuickTime movie. And whenever you have a recorded session, for somehow if you start the presentation, it doesn't show on the second screen. I don't know why, but it uh, happened to me, to me again. All right, so in this talk, continuous uptime improvement, and um, therefore you need to be aware of what availability means to you. It seems to be an easy uh, a question to ask, but it actually is um, a bit more complicated than it appears in the first um, thought. More than that, um, we are going to look into a framework on how to measure and calculate platform availability. There are many ways on how you can define availability metrics that are meaningful to you, so we are just looking into one example here, one methodology. Of course, once you have um, thought about what availability means, you still have to measure it, so we'll have a quick glance at that. So in total we are going to have around 25 minutes I guess. I might be a bit a bit longer than that. Last talk so I hope you forgive me a few minutes longer. Um, I'm trying to present all, all examples in the context of, of platform um, of a cloud foundry obviously and um, the last topic because it is related to availability, often uh, asked by our con by our customers, um, is what what are maintenance windows in the context of platforms, and how does the availability and um, maintenance window concept play together? So, for example, we used to take down services for let's say a few hours or even a, a day to maintain them. You can obviously do that for modern platforms. We'll have a look at how this is affected today. A few words about myself. I'm uh, Julian Fischer, CEO of uh, Any9s. Um, we are specialized in building tailored platform solutions based on Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. Yeah, what happens there? Well, that's strange. So the idea of the talk is, as I said, to enable a continuous uptime improvement. So wherever you start with your platform, it, um, it may change, your environment may change over time. For example, you get more customers, you introduce more data services, you whatever, deploy new versions of your, of your platform, new Cloud Foundry versions, you add Kubernetes there. Depending on the size of your organization, this may be uh, a simple monitoring metric you put together, so you'd be like, yeah, why talk about this at all? Or you are in a large organization where 
the management tells you what the availability should be. So you should have whatever, three, four, five nines, and you'll be asking yourself, all right, and what does that mean? How do I actually come up with a number that's meaningful? And um, in the end, what, like, what we'd like to uh, establish as an organization is a um, process that continuously monitors, uh, measures and monitors the availability of the platform and then derives um, measures that could be beneficial or at least ensure that any other changes are not decreasing the availability. So that learning loop pretty much looks like what the um, lean startup build measure learn looks like uh, just for uptime. As I said, the question on what is availability is not as easy to answer, but the most common, um, well, let's say, way to express availability is by applying nines to it. And there's a table here using the example of uh, um, the up availability per month. Obviously, if you uh, use that relative uh, number in percentage relative to a year, you'll be having other downtimes on the right side. And you can see the more nines you have, the, the less downtime would be tolerated under a particular uptime requirement. And people always ask us, well, where does the company name from? You can see you have one nines, two nines, three nines, and basically any nines. So that's, the number. that's where the name comes from. Um, I believe that you can design the up a, a system to a certain availability, and you should always have that in mind. So what is your uptime requirement? Um, so, all right, let's pick one, maybe 99.9%, .9%, for example. The question is, well, what are we actually talking about? Are we talking about a Cloud Foundry runtime? Are we talking about five of them? Are we talking about different environments? So if you really ask the question, what is your platform comprised of, you will see that and we've been building and operating platforms for an eternity for customers. Each environment is different. And um, we have to, first of all, describe what the platform is about and therefore affecting the question on measuring availability is affected. So we need to define the system. We need to describe it somehow. What's the best way to describe a system with regards to availability is one of the questions. And um, we've been operating service managed services way before Cloud Foundry. Databases, applications, application servers, using Chef. That's strange, never seen that before. Um, and one of the methodologies that seemed to be a straightforward thing to do is just draw a graph. What are the components that comprise your system and how do they depend um, to another? Um, there's also a notation called reliability block diagrams. Um, I think it's from electrical engineering. Um, and the idea is that you'll have um, um, serial and parallel compositions of components and of course hybrid Combinations of, combinations of that. And whenever you, you bring that into the shape of a, of a graph, or I would say in simple cases a tree, you might end up looking at something like that. So this is, for example, how uh, one of our any nights platform environments look like. Um, just you see that there's a platform. There's a platform. That platform um, comprises several platform environments, and each platform environment is comprised of several subsystems. So in this case, a base system where some of the shared components are, uh, the Cloud Foundry subsystem, the Cloud Foundry runtime, uh, and in our case, uh, our data services, which comprise eight different uh, data services, their service brokers, their SBIs, and several other components to that. So we're looking into uh, an environment with more than 100 components. And these components are uh, organized in um, a set of subsystems. As you can see, the, the Cloud Foundry environment splits into the API, 
the Tiego subsystem, the monitoring subsystem, and the service broker subsystem. And the data service themselves, they contain the actual automation that will be controlled by the service brokers. Um, now, I will try one thing. It's maybe like a screensaver that causes that. So I put in some electricity. Oh, let's see whether this fixes it. All right. So once we have figured out how the system actually looks like and we have drawn such a graph, we can see what are the components we would like to look at, uh, ideally down to the components that are atomic services. For example, uh, a Postgres backing up the cloud controller. As you can see, for example, the cloud controller is there, but there are subsequent um, components to this. I just removed that level of detail from the graphic because otherwise it would have been too bloaty. We just already a lot of in there, a lot of components in there. So we've been looking for a way that we can apply to every platform environment. And as I said, these environments might be very different. Um, let's say one customer, for example, he uses Cloud Foundry to deploy one application and he uses Cloud Foundry to separate tenants. So each organization represents one tenant and has the same application in it as every other organization within that Cloud Foundry. So for example, for, for a customer like that, the availability of the Cloud Controller API to deploy new application versions is very different in meaning and importance compared to a public-facing developer platform where the developers will start calling you in case they cannot push their applications. So we've been looking for a way to express both the uh, composition of a system as well as the importance of their particular subsystems. So the first um, aspects of it describe how do you express dependencies of, well, let's say, within one of your subsystems, more elementary subsystems, such as Diego, for example. So in Diego, um, you have uh, a different cells, and it, depending on how many of the cells are there, your applications will be up and running, or they won't. Another type of dependency would be the serial dependency, where you have two components, and both components need to be present. So there are some uh, calculations or formulas you can apply to that. I well, didn't fix it. And um, in this case, you can see that uh, assuming 99.5% availability of each component, if you have a serial dependency and you look at that dependency over a longer period of time, that a serial combination of those dependencies will result into a lower availability in total. So in this example, you lose about half a percent. So of course, because if one component fails and it's a serial composition, uh, the overall service will, won't be available. And because the other component fails too, the combination of the two is less than. Actually, that's a pretty nice feature. It keeps me going, right? So a, a failure of one comp uh, component implies the failure of the entire service. So obviously there's a second version of it um, where the, com the components are in parallel. And uh, what this means is that uh, each component, assuming the same availability, 99.5%, the service will be available if at least one of the components is present. So for example, you have deployed your application and you have two instances and let's assume you don't utilize both instances to a full degree, but distribute incoming requests. If one application dies, your application request will still be served. Is one of the two application instances survive? And there's a formula for that too, so which basically um, means that you only decrease the availability if both of the components have been, um, uh, have been failing together and the combination of the two will increase the overall availability. 
So assuming that you had 99.5% in the beginning, the, the parallel composition of that nearly gives you 100%. So the compound availability of these increases. Obviously, you want to have situations where you have a little bit more complicated topology, where you put together some things, things in serial, and other components might be in parallel. So in this example, uh, you can see that you'll have um, the serial dependency, which is the, the outer structure, and one of the components is comprised of a parallel structure, so all you do is just take the formula and put it in braces into the formula. I think that's basic mathematics. And uh, the result is that, as you can see, the overall availability is pretty, pretty much um, decreased because of the dominance of the serial um, sequence by the four components being in a sequence. So each assuming 99.5% 90, availability, the dominance of the serial um, composition makes up the decreased availability. So there are situations, for example, with database clusters, where you actually want to express a partial availability, uh, where you can lose a certain redundancy and still your service would be able to survive. So uh, a MongoDB replica set or Postgres asynchronous replication with three nodes and uh, a quorum-based leader uh, uh, election um, may survive the failure of one of three nodes. So in order to express the availability, um, you could, for example, apply an equation like that, um, providing a few, an, um, an example here. So n would be the number of the nodes in the cluster, is three, three replicas. And you, you need at least two of the nodes for the service to be available, which would be m, m is equal to two. Assuming that each node has the average availability of 99.5%, you will see that the overall availability is also close to 100%. So you can increase, for example, the number of replicas to five, then we'll have five nodes, and maybe you only need three nodes to be available, and you can see that that gives you the possibility to survive even more node failures and still remain available all the time. So as I said, the serial, parallel, and composite availabilities is usually applied to more basic components, components where there's a direct relationship and, and the nodes do somehow equal or serial independent stuff. Um, in database systems, usually the nodes are kind of equal. That formula applies. But as we can see in, in that a diagram I showed earlier, the dependency graph, that uh, the subsystems are comprised of very different components. And the question is, how do we actually come from um, the service availability of, let's say, a database or a Diego cell to the availability of the entire platform? So you need to put in some thought. Um, and we came up with the, well, it's kind of an obvious thing to do. You model the, um, the overall platform availability by recursively going through the dependency graph and determining the best applicable formula to each of the uh, compositions you will find there, and uh, then subsequently build up your metric from it. So I try to be visual about that because that sounds like a, a lot of theory, but it actually isn't. So we're always coming again to that graph that shows you the platform, looking at one platform environment with a base system, a cloud foundry, and the N9 data services, and the miscellaneous components we'll just neglect for now. So basically, you determine the availability uh, for the sources in the dependency graph. So at some point, you need to measure the availability of one of the components in the graph before you can then compound them into and compose them into compound services. And um, you would then um, yeah, somehow bring them together. We'll have a look at how this works. So you basically go through the graph. Well, you could do that bottom up. That's basically how the data will flow. But in this talk, we'll go the other way around um, and um, look at it from top to bottom. So why do we do that is um, 
let's look into, you have one region at this point of time, let's say AWS, US East, and there you have your platform. The platform usually comprises of several environments. So you have a staging environment where you try out new releases of your platform, and you have a production environment where you actually where your applications are that are important to you and your customers. So how do you express the fact that these um, that these environments are not equally important? And um, you could apply other formulas to that, I'm pretty sure, but um, one simple approach is to use weighted averages. So you basically sum up the availabilities and divide it um, by the weighting factor. I prepared an example, so for example, if you have a development, a staging, and a production environment, you could arbitrarily weight them to express their relative importance to your overall availability. So for example, this is very neat if your uh, boss tells you you need 99.9% .9 availability and uh, you can come back to them, him and ask, well, all right, what do you mean with that? Um, but that question, I guess, will be without an answer. He will just be angry because it's an ask a question that's not as easy to answer. But if, if you come back to him and you tell them, well, relative to your production environment, how important is staging? He would say, well, I don't care about staging, but maybe your developers are, or your platform engineers do care about that. Maybe there is, a, uh, there is impact to your overall development if this environment isn't there. So this will allow you to um, apply, re apply relative weights to each of your environment that will be then um, multiplied against its availability. So you calculate the availability relative to the importance of each environment. So to be more visual, put their calculations. If you want to download the slides afterwards and go through the calculations in greater detail, you're free to do so. So basically each environment has a weighting factor and therefore you can determine the overall availability. As you can see in this example, we had a very good production availability of, of nearly 100%, but the platform availability has been dragged down by the relative uh, low availability of the staging environment and it is highly weighted. So maybe you wanna change that weighting factor to show, you, show off towards your boss. So in this uh, illustration shows that we have come up with the combination, the weighted combination of uh, the individual platform environments as the way to determine the overall platform availability. So and we can now step um, down as, uh, one level and we just look at how can we combine the subsystems within um, a Cloud Foundry environment which comprises of uh, the, the pink uh, Cloud Foundry runtime and the N9 Stata services in our case. Because, I mean, in order to ap applications to be available, you also need the backing services. So that these two are equally important can be expressed in a similar way. In this case, a weighted average again. So as you can see, you're then here on level two, and you can basically rep uh, repeat that, looking into the availability of the Cloud Foundry runtime, which is comprised of uh, the API, Cloud Controller and UAA, the monitoring subsystem, additional components to monitor the, the individual components, the Diego subsystem, as well as your service brokers, for example. And then applying the same strategy again, you have your weighting factors, and for example, here, you could express that use case I was mentioning. So the customer who has this one application and just uses Cloud Foundry uh, as a, as a multi-tenancy uh, uh, enabling tool uh, might, uh, for example, weight the Cloud Foundry API way lower than a customer with a public-facing um, platform. So the idea was to come up with a quite simple tool that allows you to express uh, express the express the individual requirements of a platform and uh, come up with a, an availability metric that has meaning in the particular context of that one platform instead of coming up with a calculation that may be not meaningful or may not be meaningful in the broader context. 
So yeah, as you can see, we, s we basically step down one level by the other and you can repeat that. Um, so the weighted averages are actually interesting if you have subsystems with different components that may be of different weight in different scenarios. Um, so you go down that um, path until you hit one of the components where you actually want to use that serial and parallel dependencies where you possibly can also measure the available instead of d just calculating them. So the question is how do you obtain availability from atomic services and the answer is obviously you measure them. So the monitoring of availability is very important as part of your input. And um, there's another aspect beside of having availabilities of, comp uh, of components that you can then put into your fancy formulas, it's also important that the availability monitoring serves as input for uh, the support team to diagnose uh, platform failures. So for example, if you have a trouble with your cloud controller, this could be caused by the Postgres behind the cloud controller. And if your availability monitoring is good enough, you can um, find out that um, you'll have a problem with your database instead of your cloud controller where the, actually the, um, the first uh, error came from. So you, not, you do not only know that you have a problem, but you also would like to have an indicator where this problem might come from and te subsequently tell your platform operators what to know in order to, to conclude a, a informed decision. So in Cloud Foundry, we, I guess, all use a Bosch and therefore we use Monet. So that's a pretty neat tool and it's very good to monitor atomic services. It allows you to have process self-healing. It monitors the system of, 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 of processes, which is absolutely insufficient. Because um, if you're pretty sure you've seen data service doing um, well, their process is present, but they're not responding, or web applications could be the same way. So it, it might be necessary to ask the question for a certain component, how do I determine the availability of the component? And the conclusion usually is that you need to perform some kind of functional testing, for example, connecting to the database, querying whether a certain schema is there, just to see whether, at least heuristically, the system is available. And th that leads to the question, how much load do you want to uh, expose your system to just to perform that particular check, which also determines how often the check can be executed. So there's a certain optimization problem here. Um, but I mean, that's, that really depends on the component you're looking at. Um, so while Monet is pretty interesting, um, the bigger picture usually comprises a monitoring tool such as Prometheus, could be anything else serving the same purpose, where you actually go back to that diagram and um, for each subsystem, you got that fancy formula yourself and you translate that into uh, a markup that will represent that formula. And that will result into a visual dashboard that shows you the availability of the systems and subsystems uh, that represent the graph if you've seen earlier. So the, the good thing here is that you can basically traverse your dependency graph in your monitoring system by just clicking at those availability um, metrics and you will again then go to one level deeper and you can see the dependencies of that particular subsystem and so on. So that helps you a lot to determine if an availability seems to be odd to find out where it actually comes from. So over the time by applying that technique you will have more and more dashboards assigned to those subsystems. So again that you can do that until you come to the more elementary services. And I'd like to hi highlight one thing that is um, the availability of a particular subsystem, let's say the Cloud Foundry runtime, as we've seen, may go down to the question on all the availability of the subsystem, uh, are the subsystems available? But at the same time, maybe your users will, will say like, well, I don't actually care about your fancy metric. 
what I care about is can I, can I deploy an application or can I create a service instance? So you may want to look into a monitoring of availability more in the context of use cases than in uh, the context of just determining a fancy number because that's actually what the value for the customer is. Does the system fulfill what it's supposed to do? So the example here, can I create a Postgres instance, may involve, do I have do I have the, the, the service broker, does the, does the virtual machine, does it have storage attached to it, are there local resources, are the dependencies of that service present? So you can basically um, look at the use case and give a use case based um, monitoring by looking at that dependency tree for that particular use case instead of the overall subsystem and uh, conclude the healthiness of the use case. This is especially important when you have scenarios where particular use cases are way more important than others because it's um, a special use case. It's having knowledge around the applications running on the system, for example, is one of them, where you know that that particular database is more important than, than the other thing. Or we have a CICD pipeline running at a high pace, and I really need that CF push experience to be there. So another interesting thing is uh, to perform availability monitoring during upgrades. So I'm giving you an example. Um, we uh, repeatedly uh, run upgrades here using the availability of uh, the data service subsystem. And it's interesting to see what actually happens during the upgrade. How does the upgrade affect the availability of the overall system? Uh, we do those tests in staging, for example, to conclude and report the customer what the actual impact might be. As I said earlier, the question on how do maintain, um, maintenance windows look like today is a question that we've seen repeatedly with customers. So while the definition says it's a period of time designated in advance to perform preventive maintenance that could cause disruption of service, I think the question is, what does it mean for the application platform? Because one of the reasons to move there is to avoid outages. And we are on the cloud, and the cloud never fails, so you already see where this is going. Platform-wide outages are absolutely unacceptable, and they are unnecessary too. But then you got those uh, fancy forms in your company, in that 300-page handbook that's about whatever, server security. and. And, and standards how you how to run software systems so you need to fill out that paragraph that's about maintenance windows I would say the reality of maintenance windows nowadays is that we are looking at platform environments with 3,000 virtual machines uh, managed by Bosch for example and how would you perform an upgrade in such a system I mean you have several subsystems as seen earlier and, uh, for example, updating Diego would mean that you'll just take away a virtual machine, you know, and those applications being affected would be created somewhere in the cluster. So in that particular example, you can see that you can take, take away up to two cells before the system will actually be um, experiencing significant um, problems from um, from failing Diego's. So an in-flight limit of one would leave enough capacity for applications to be deployed, while an in-flight limit of two would already uh, fully utilize the system. Wouldn't be a good idea to apply that in that simple example. On the data sales service side, you can see that a rolling upgrade through the data service instance for clustered instances, such as Postgres, you will see failovers towards the application, but no outages. If you upgrade a single node Postgres, recreating that virtual machine during the process, you will see an outage uh, that might be of five or 10 minutes, depending on the, on the upgrade. So what, I, what this is saying is that the maintenance window is about setting your in-flight limits and uh, setting the redundancies in your system accordingly, and that you should design your system to your uptime requirements and that within that process, you have to uh, determine the, re the, re the redundancy and, and weigh it against the infrastructure costs you're looking at. So, yes. So, summing it up, there is a systematic way to define 
platform availability, you still have the possibility to tailor towards your specific environment needs. And you can actually make promises towards your manager to have environments 99.99% uh, available. And you can also uh, you know, make sense of, of such a requirement and come back with some more explanation on what this actually means by telling him how you weighted the individual components, verifying that the way you weighted it represents the interest of your customers or your organization. So the platform dependency graph was a graphic we've seen repeatedly. And so that, that, that step of analyzing the dependencies in your system is one of the most crucial, crucial ones. Um, so you then define and measure the availability of atomic services. You compose and, and weight the subsystem availability and, and, and derive the metric from it. Uh, implementing your availability system in a way that it gives you a differential diagnosis is meaningful and as I said the calculation of availabilities of subsystems is usually a composition of, of uh, other subsystem availabilities, a recursive path towards something you can measure. So. Um, in order to come into a learn loop, you'll have to, you know, derive insights from what you see. For example, looking at the upgrade, see how it affects the, the availability during the upgrade, and maybe come up with a better idea so that less impact is seen. Uh, we see in large system a continuous maintenance going on. So you're just done with one update and basically the next update is already to be prepared. So there are waves of updates constantly going through the system. So it's uh, meaningful to design the system capacity accordingly so that these update waves won't interfere with your customer workloads. And that actually completes my talk for today. I'm 10 minutes over my time. No, not so many people left, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, here, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, regarding the serial dependencies you, um, you mentioned, this is basic probability, right? Um, but one prerequisite is that the events are independent. Is this always this the case? Uh, because one outage might influence another uh, outage of another service, or even both could have the same root cause, and then the calculation is wrong. Well, yes. Um, the question is always, to what degree do you want to calculate the availability, and to what degree do you want to measure it? So uh, I simplified and said you, you measure basic components and you compose the availability of, of subsystems. If you have an ability to measure the availability <coughs> sorry, of the subsystem instead, you can actually reduce that error you were mentioning. Also, we didn't talk about the infrastructure availability, for example, network and, and, and bandwidth and how this may affect uh, your cluster availability. Postgres, uh, a good example, um, if you have a network uh, trouble, that causes a split brain, then even if all the three nodes are basically healthy, you could have um, an outage of a subsystem. So yes, you're right. There are mistakes in that procedure that you'll, be, you'll have to be aware of. Um, it is an answer to a question that we, we, conc we, we have this specific requirement where the management said we want to have that availability of the platform. And the answer was, or the, our job was to determine a way how to give them the availability and still provide them a meaningful explana a way that you can explain to the customer what this actually means. Does this perfectly give you all possible scenarios? Surely not. But we have at least a continuous monitoring now. We have a history of data and we can see, for example, also applying different techniques doing upgrade and see whether we can have been able to reduce the impact of upgrades. And this is the purpose of what I have been presenting. But there are many ways you could improve that. All right, All right then. Thank you very much.